Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. The news tonight, Rambuka maintains palm tree theory. No redundancies at government print tree despite new owners. And builders want constitution change. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Sagar. Sidelpa so leader Sitibini Rambuka is maintaining his stand on one of the initiatives of his uh, former alliance party, that buildings in Fiji should not be more in size than palm trees. Being lashed out by Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama, labelling his comment as a joke, Rambuka continues to claim it is about protecting the beautiful sceneries of Fiji. Ali Kimbia with the story. Despite the ongoing development being carried out in the country, Sadelpa leader Sitiveni Rambuka claims high-rise building will have a huge impact on the tourism sector. We do not want to, uh, to uh, uh, damage the scenery around the tourism uh, destination spots. Rambuka says there should be standard that needs to be followed for the construction of high-rise building. In the built-up areas, that's why they're called built-up areas. They're built up, they are reclaimed, and uh, the skyline, uh, uh, the... the um, Architectural skyline uh, uh, have now uh, projected uh, higher than the natural skyline. Uh, for, a, for a long time, we had the uh, Reserve Bank of Fiji as the tallest building in Suva. But that has now been uh, uh, overshadowed by other developments around the Reserve Bank. However, Prime Minister Vorege Mbainimarama says Fiji's vision is not limited to a palm tree height. It brings every Fijian hope for what is more to come. When they look out over the capital and see the cranes dotting the skyline and the new structures being erected, all clear and impressive signs that we are finally fulfilling our destiny. Bani Marama says every new building represents new opportunity for businesses to expand and more employment for the people. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. There will be no redundancy when Fijian Holdings Limited takes over the operations of government printing soon. FHL has purchased the printery after its bid was approved earlier this year. FHL Chief Executive Nozab Farid says they are ready to relook at the operations of the printery in a bid to ensure profitability and also smooth operations. Fijian Holdings says it will retain the current workers at government printery and at the same time maximize its operations to ensure profitability. So the very first thing we are to do is we have to get back the government printer to its normal status. So uh, we, we want to spend some money, get all the mission repaired, and just to get make sure that there is a consistent income. Farid says they will complete all the transactions in the next few weeks, and they have paid 10% of the total value to acquire sales of government printing. Uh, we have been told by the Minister for Public Enterprise within the next three to four weeks, uh, he wants us to complete the transaction. We have uh, gone through all the agreements. We are just waiting for a final sale and purchase agreement to be signed off. Fijian Holdings Limited is expected to work with overseas experts in the printing industry to make government printing a profitable entity. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Fiji Building Designers Association at its special general meeting today proposed amendments to its constitution. The changes are being looked at to allow the association to meet the local needs. Kritika Kumar reports. The Brains at Trust of the Building Industry says the modification of the old constitution will enable the association to carry out its responsibilities without hassle. And it was modified just to get registration under industrial act as an association to quickly counter some unwanted uh, action which would have uh, distinct us from logic plans. Amongst the changes being proposed, the members will now have to follow a thorough process. And very soon, all members will go through a registration process within the association as required by the government. Once registered, there will be a panel of listing which will be given to all relevant authorities. 
guest speaker Warren Yi highlighted some of the measures that can be taken by the association to better their services. This is a highly specialized field. Separate working groups need to be formed for each standard or issue at hand. The proposed changes will be put to members for further deliberations and vote before it is passed and incorporated into the constitution. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Fijian Elections Office has confirmed candidate voting numbers on the ballot paper will be released 18 days after the announcement of the writ. FEO earlier this year drew the starting number for the ballot papers, which will be 508. Rachel Nart reports. Fijian Elections Office will conduct a draw in which all candidate names will be listed in an alphabetical order and the numbers will be allocated respectively. Now, in order to ensure the entire process is transparent, free and fair, multi-observers can be present in the country from now. The presence of observers in the country depends on the plan from MOG itself, the multinational observer group. Uh, you can have long-term observers and you can have short-term observers. Uh, and uh, short-term observers would usually come in a couple of days before elections, but long-term observers can actually start from tomorrow. The SOE has clarified there will be no restrictions on election night of having political parties and their representatives present at the counting centers. The count center, there is going to be over 100 counting stations. So parties can be there. Uh, they will have to have at least one agent per counting center if they want to scrutinize. But the Fijian Elections Office plans to have at least 100 uh, counting centers active on election night. Meanwhile, the FEO conducted a voter registration drive around the country today, encouraging those eligible to register in order to cast their vote come election day. Rachel Nam, FBC News. Still to come, Fiji Port works hard to attract cruise liners. And Nandi gets free Wi-Fi in public areas. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in the cash on the Wagarong and Bulafe, Nambandu and a serre. Oya was it size, Lombasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bulafe, Nambandu and Serre. We have the Tumeli, Aquana Town of Hingatoka, Teletakin and Avaro and Bulafe, Nambandu and a serre. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakan and Bulafe, Nambandu and a serre. Bula FM, Nambandu and a serre. Acting Prime Minister and Attorney General Aya Said Kayum today launched a new free Wi-Fi zone in Nandi. This is a continuing government initiative giving Fijians free internet access in public areas and is similar to those launched in Suva and Singatoka. Said Kayum says free hotspot areas were created mainly for people to get access to high-speed internet. The Wi-Fi hotspot areas are a part of government's vision to avail free and fast internet services for all Fijians. The Wi-Fi hotspot, in particular for the young people and also, of course, for those of you who are not so young, is to give an opportunity for ordinary Fijians to come to areas where they have spa safe spaces to be able to access internet services. And, of course, within the 24 hours, they get one hour for free. All of this area will be Wi-Fi hotspotted. Of course, the bus stand area and the area currently facing the part of the market facing this way but within two weeks' time, the entire market will have access to uh, the Wi-Fi. Fiji Ports Corporation plays a major role in bringing in more cruise liners to the country and needs to keep up the ante in a bid to attract world-class ships. Fiji has recently seen an influx of tourist ships berthing at our ports and the corporation says it is vital to provide timely service. Kritika Kumar reports. The Fiji Ports chief executive says cruise liners' arrivals have doubled recently and this continues to add challenges for managing port operations. Uh, in close coordination with all other agencies like the, the shipping agent and then the, the customs, the biosecurity and also the, the quarantine services and all that, is basically our, our task is to work with closely with them and then to, to promote this kind of uh, interagency sort of uh, cooperation. Fiji Port says cruise ship tourism brings numerous positive input for the Fijian economy. Uh, when 
birthing on arrival at a given time is utmost important. So that's what we always try to achieve and we have been always been able to achieve that. The captain of the ship Majestic Princess which was docked at the Suva Harbour yesterday says they will bring in more cruise liners in the country. All the more ready also to the passion that we're going to have a welcome ceremony today, plaque exchange. So it's always nice when you take a new ship to a new port, starting a good long relationship. Meanwhile, to meet the increased passenger demands, Fiji ports will upgrade the current facilities in Suva and work on developing a new port facility soon. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. More than 50 villages in the Western Division are starting to feel the effects of the meteorological drought. Consistently receiving emergency water carting with their water sources either being dried up or drying up. In the Yasawas, an estimated 10,000 islanders are currently earmarked for regular water supply, with the Commissioner's Office also looking at other nearby islands. Director for Meteorological Services Ravin Kumar says the drought is expected to last a few more weeks, but the forecast for rain average to less than average over the next two months. Meanwhile, media liaison officer in the Commissioner West office, Rami Lewaravu, says villages in the affected areas are reminded to use water sparingly. There are about uh, seven tikinas. That is for Asawa Island only. And within that uh, seven tikinas, there are about uh, six to seven villages in each tikina. Uh, that's roughly a figure, the number of villages in Itikina. So out of the seven Itikinas, about six to seven villages in Itikina. And in one village, there are about uh, 200 to 400 people in that range. While the effects of Tropical Storm Florence continues to linger in the mid-Atlantic, the U.S. military has been mobilized to provide critical disaster relief support in the Carolinas. Authorities say troops will be needed to continue that support long after the storm has subsided. Ahead in sports, Fijian drew a bank on team spirit for NRC clash. And all eyes on Anthony Joshua for tomorrow's fight. Details after the break. Vela, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coraco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic kids. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigar, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji Airways drew a coach Senirusi Seruvakula believes that paying attention to the finer details and the players' understanding of each other will be a key factor for tomorrow's clash. The Fijian players had a day rest today as the countdown to their National Rugby Championship campaign against the Sydney Rays tomorrow begins. Fijian-born and destructive centre Samu Karevi has put pen to paper with Rugby Australia and the Queensland Reds until the end of next year. The Fiji Airways Fijiana Sevens team has been drawn alongside France, Canada and Ireland in the Glendale Sevens in the USA. This is the opening round of the 2018-2019 World Women's 7 Series. The Fiji women's side will be expecting tough matches from France and Canada, who finished third and fourth in the 2018 series. Pool A sees Australia, Spain and Mexico. Rugby World Cup 7's winner New Zealand leads Pool B alongside USA, China and England. Fiji international lawn bowler Litia Tikoisuva wants to end her five-year drought in the Pineapple Cup, which started today at the Suva Bowling Club. Tikoisuva was the first female to win the cup when the women's competition was, was established in 2013. Melita Vanga reports. The feeling of lifting the Pineapple Cup is still fresh in Litia Tikoisuva's mind as she is back to reclaim her lost glory. I'm going to uh, do my very best and uh, we have a lot of uh, talented bowlers uh, here so uh, uh, I always uh, think that if it's your day, it's your day. The 55-year-old is also using this tournament as a build-up to the championship in Sydney. Uh, to win, to prepare myself for the um, 
uh, uh, upcoming um, uh, World Championship, which is the Champion of Champions, which is the end of uh, next month uh, in Sydney. Meanwhile, the competition is expected to get intense tomorrow with the finals. We have all the the top bowlers in the country that are playing this weekend, so there should be some uh, fantastic balls uh, displayed this weekend. 32 men and 12 ladies are vying for the top honors, and two lucky winners in both the categories will get the chance to leave the Cups come tomorrow. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Anthony Joshua weighed in at 107.9 kg ahead of his title fight against Alexander Povetkin at Wembley. You can watch the build-up matches starting at 5 a.m. tomorrow on FBC TV and FBC Sports. The Melbourne Storms made an, another impressive performance last night in the preliminary final, thrashing Cronulla Sharks 22-6. Fullback Billy Slater was the star, scoring two tries and made three successful conversions. Waikato have underlined their championship credentials with a thumping 54-21 win over Bay of Plenty in Rotorua to claim the Chiefs Country Cup in the Mighty Ten Cup last night. The win has enabled them to move six points clear at the top of the championship ladder. A weak trough of low pressure lies slow moving over the eastern parts of the group. The trough is expected to affect the eastern parts of the country till tonight. We take a look at the west. It was a mixture, cloudy conditions and fine conditions as well. Now eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was a cloudy morning. However, it cleared around midday, making way for some sun in the afternoon. And up north, it was a much hotter Saturday with the sun out. At, at sea, east to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots. Winds gradually easing from later tomorrow. Now for the tides, high tide will be at 5.10 a.m. with low tide at 11.29 a.m. tomorrow. Sunrise will be at 6.02. Similar conditions for today will prevail until tomorrow, so don't forget your umbrellas. Tomorrow's temperatures, it will be a hot Sunday in most parts of the country. And looking further onto Monday, generally fine. Recapping uh, the main stories, Rambuka maintains palm tree theory. No redundancies at government print tree despite new owners. And builders want constitution change. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, do you think a hotline will reduce the litter problem in the country? You can visit our FBC website to answer. And you can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News, or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirch FM. Mirch FM is hot. Singatoka Mirch FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirch FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sona Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mirch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singer Line. Mirch FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson, Sorry. I love listening to Mirch FM here in Nasori. Mirch FM is hot. Mirch FM is hot. It's hot.